I will here present a virtual version of Study Cafe 2 that we had planned. The videos will be in two parts and I will start with part one here. The aim is, just as it would have been at the actual physical version on Full Sang Sale, to do some exercises that enables you to practice some research design oriented questions for one, and also some other types of former exam questions, some actual exam questions that, that former students have had to, to battle with. And and I should really emphasize that you should expect some of the same um, exam questions, same type of exam questions to emerge in the 2021. Not identical ones, of course, but the same type. What I will suggest is that you watch the video and then pause it when I have presented an exercise in order to reflect on it, in order to practice how would I actually approach this. And then right afterwards, I will then give in, in this video here, I will then give some general feedback on um, what kind of answer we would expect. I'll put in afterwards some, some, some time codes in order for you to be, make it easier for you to navigate back and forth um, in these videos here. I'll put that information into the slide set that I'll upload to, to Blackboard. First, I want to say something very general about how actually to read any case or any exam question that relates to identifying and assessing the quality of research design. What should one actually do? Okay, one has to identify the four different types of research designs, for instance, and identify strengths and weaknesses, but what, what does and one sort of in practice actually do when looking at a case? So so generally what I would pay, what I would do, or what I would pay attention to is for one the sort of overall and principal research design decisions. You do not need to be an expert on the content of the study as such, especially not in the first round, in the first read. So don't really focus on what is it about, but focus on well, what, what's going on, what kind of decisions have been made. That could, for instance, be what data is collected. Is it words or numbers? How many times is data collected? Does it say in 2016 researchers did this and in 2017 they resent the survey? Or does it say in 2014 we asked respondents about what they had experienced or what so what how does this data collection process what does it actually look like and is it a focus on one context is there really a focus on one firm or one individual or is the aim as in the Brenda example from 2018 is the aim to say something about a large number of employees at a firm um, so what, what's really the overall idea of, of what's going on in the case? Another thing that I pay a lot of attention to is what does this sample, the sample that the study relies upon, where does this come from? Is it the same what, is it the same people that we start out with that we also finish with? Um, or are there maybe people that don't finish in education or just like in the world? or two airplane examples, are there some planes that don't come back? And, and what does that tell us about the research question in the study? Um, so, and then also similarly, we had this example from, from, from Collins and from Good to Great in the last lecture on Vermeulen, where I was talking about how they had looked at 11 successful firms and identified what these firms did. The question would then be, well, why these 11 firms? What about other firms? Why? is selection bias maybe an issue? We'll get a few examples that relates to this here today. And also related to that, might there be important data that was left out? Is there important stuff that we do not know about the participants in the study or the firms? Is there some information that we obviously should have? Another thing to pay attention to is the actual data and the variables that, that has been collected. Are they really measuring what they set out to measure? Think, for instance, about the video games example that I talked about a couple of times. Are we asking kids to assess how many hours they play video games and how violent these games are and how aggressive their behavior is? That would be getting data from one single source and risk a common method bias. Maybe kids that are particularly aggressive do not think that video games are that aggressive. Um, so it would be a much stronger study to try to get information from multiple different sources. Again, referring back to the Brenner example that we discussed in the first study cafe, the exam question from 2018, that was a situation where 
they actually had tried to assess employee performance based on multiple different data sources. So where's the variables, where the data, where is that coming from? And then of course, overall, can we actually make a causal conclusion? Is it possible to go from that research design and, and, and then answer the question in a sense where it says, this is what causes something else? Or do we have to be sort of be more cautious? So these is, this is not an exhaustive list. This is not sort of a complete list of things to pay attention to, but hopefully it's more concrete and more specific and it might help you read an exam case or read some information about a study um, and, 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 and something to think about what to pay attention to. These are not clear cut rules. This is not a, a recipe that one can just follow from A to Z and then the meal is ready. It is about practicing. Okay. That was just sort of a general overall intro. Let's get to some of the examples. So I just study this figure here and consider, is it a causal effect of these various educations? So we have a range of educations down here. And then on the Y axis, we have some indication of overall life income. As you can see, creative arts students or people that um, graduate with a creative arts degree on average, make less money than people that study business, the law, economics, medicine, etc. So try to consider, can we say that there's a causal effect of these educations on lifetime income? Again, please pause, try to consider what to do about it. So let's look at the information that we have. So clearly a bunch of different people have taken a bunch of different educations and the data clearly shows that over a sort of a lifelong period, there is a substantial difference in terms of how much money these different people earn. But is it an effect of the education? Well, might people that study creative arts be different from people that study economics? It could be different in terms of their ability. Maybe business students are smarter. Maybe they're more interested in money. Maybe they're more motivated to search for a different kind of job. It might not have anything at all to do with the kind of information they learned at their education. It might simply be a selection effect. So the effect is not from the education they receive, but already when they started their education, there's a difference. Maybe the difference is that people that finish these different degrees are different. Maybe people that don't finish a creative arts degree actually make a lot of money. They just don't show up in this overview. I doubt this to be the case. It's just in principle. We simply cannot know where the effect is coming from. So that's basically the same thing that I've tried to highlight here, that um, there could very well be a selection effect or there is a strong selection effect, whether it sort of undermines the entire effect. We don't know based on this graph, but that's at least something to have in mind. that We cannot make that inference. Okay, let's try to do another example here. Please spend some minutes on thinking about what is written here and how you would answer it. Okay, now that you've had some time and if you paused it, had some time to try to think about it, you can hopefully see that the example is fairly similar to the one that we just had before. There's actually a visual overview in the research design 2001 textbook chapter that, that uses this example and, and 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 says well in principle the causal relationship could be from school type to academic achievement but there could be the same selection effect that we saw before maybe children of different abilities select into different kinds of school types maybe parents of children that can afford to go to private school have better facilities for studying at home or maybe they have siblings that can help them with their uh, homework because they might also be academics there can be all kinds of different types of arrows that we can um, that we can make here which then again leads us to the same point no there could be a selection effect the children's of, of parents that either send them to private or public school could be fundamentally different. It might not be, have anything to do with the quality of the private school. So again, we cannot infer that a private school improves performance. So let's go for a sort of bigger example of assessing a research design and let's go for an example that was 
actually used in uh, the 2019 exam. So please go to the next slide in just a second and, and, and read the case, read the questions, especially 1A and 1B, and think about what would your good answer be. And then I'll have a few things to say about that in just a second. Okay, so here, after you've had some time to think about it for yourself, again, actually practicing it and, and challenging yourself is an efficient way of trying to uh, trying to learn these these uh, these kinds of questions, learn how to deal with them. But let's let's consider what information we have here. So we have two studies, and there are some overall things I want to say. I should add, I will also show you sort of the an overall correction guide that's here on this the next slide, and I will also upload an actual good exam answer that um, a student from last year produced. So you'll get quite a few. General, quite a bit of general feedback on what a good answer looks like. Okay, but with the main overall things that I really want a, a, a reasonable answer to be able to address is that in the first study, we have a randomized control trial. A couple of things one could notice. One could sort of say the randomization process about at what point of time they could show up is not a typical sort of, it's not a randomization just as flipping a coin. One could in principle question that. And one could also point out, we want to compare the change of one variable to some kind of baseline, a control group. But here we are trying out one treatment and another treatment, We're sort of trying out two things. So that could also be a criticism one could provide. However, what would be a, a reward system? That, 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 when, how do you do a non-reward system? I mean, you can't not pay people. Practically speaking, you want them to show up. But any kind of reward system is sort of more or less some kind of reward. So so we still call it a randomized control trial, but it would be excellent if one points out that we don't know if A is better than B or A is or the other one is worse than I mean we don't know which is better. We don't know the baseline. B is 50% better, but maybe it's actually A that is worse. And in the second study, the key thing to pay attention to is not to call it a field experiment. We only have one firm. We do not know we don't have any sort of clear benchmark. We don't have a comparison with another firm that did something else. Um, so we do have longitudinal data. We do have a focus on one firm over time and we can see that they did they did something at some point and then stuff changed. But this 4% improvement that we see, we do not necessarily know where it comes from. Maybe customer demands changed. Maybe their products got better. We don't know that there's only this one variable, this um, this incentive system that has changed. We don't know if that's the only thing that it's that is different. That's why we call it longitudinal. We can't call it any kind of experiment, not even a quasi-experiment. And that's a key thing to notice. As mentioned, here we have an overview of some points that the students got last year after the exam. That's the feedback that they got. And as mentioned, I'll upload a good example exam answer that you can also find on Blackboard.